everybody, welcome back to Diesel Creek. My name's Matt. Behind me, my 1964 Caterpillar D8H bulldozer. Now in a previous episode, we rescued this thing where it had been sitting in a field for probably uh, 15, 20 years. When we got there, the pony engine was completely full of water. Somehow, by some miracle, we were able to get the thing running well enough to get the big engine turning over and eventually get it started as well. The trouble came when we came back to get the machine loaded up a few weeks later, the pony engine would run, but it didn't sound very happy. And the big engine would crank and crank and crank, but would not start. Eventually we were able to get it running, but we found out that the exhaust for the pony engine, which runs through the intake for the diesel engine in a separate tube to preheat the intake air was rotted out because we were getting pony motor exhaust actually choking out the diesel intake. So just as a field fix to get it loaded on a trailer, we actually loosened up the intake manifold for it to breathe some fresh air and when we did that the thing lit right off and we were able to get it loaded out and brought here at home the other thing that happened was when it finally did take off something went bang in the gearbox for the pony engine and uh, it locked up and died it actually cracked the gear case on the pony as well so we left it running all the way here and parked it right where you see it and it has not moved since because there's no way to restart that thing until we switch pony engines so in a previous episode, hopefully you guys saw me resurrect a couple pony engines that a very generous subscriber donated to the channel. And in today's episode, hopefully we're going to get one of those installed and get this baby fired back up and ready for some action. So you probably can't see it and we'll have to examine it more once we get this engine out of here, but there's there's a crack in the cat there's a crack in the casting right through that area there. And I don't know exactly what happened inside of there, but like I said, something let go, catastrophically failed, whatever you want to call it. So there's no more getting this thing started with this particular pony engine. It does still run. I think we overheated it a bit trying to get this thing running the last time. But the engine itself still runs. Uh, everything behind it, however, I don't know what's really left of it or what kind of condition it's in until we pull it out and give it a good thorough examination. So that's what we're going to be doing right now. Now, step one in this procedure, though, is going to be to drain the coolant down because pony engines are multifunctional engines. They not only crank over the diesel engine, they, like I said, the exhaust gases preheat the intake, and they also circulate engine coolant through this engine. So this acts as a very rapid block heater, and it circulates all the engine coolant right through there and does a really good job at bringing your engine up to temperature. So on a cold day... Nothing beats a pony engine. You've got to have some serious batteries to do some cranking on a cold day with an engine like this. But a pony engine, almost guaranteed to get you started. But because that coolant runs through the block, we can't just start unbolting things or we're going to have a god-awful mess on our hands. So i got to find a coolant drain on this thing, and we're going to drain the coolant down pretty far to be able to uh, take this thing out. All right, I found the coolant drain, which is down there, and took some serious pressure to break loose but I got a little pan under there which I know is not going to hold it all but we will fill the pan up at least and find another container to put it into All right, so we started draining the coolant out there, and I thought to myself, man, this is a big machine. I'm sure this thing holds a lot of coolant. So I Googled it about the time I filled up that bucket over there, and then I uh, went and <laughs> found this Rubbermaid tub and stuck it under there because this old girl holds 31 gallons of coolant, according to what I read. I'm not even trying to drain the whole system. I just need to bleed it down low enough to get below uh, the coolant inlet and outlet on the pony engine. I'm not sure which direction the flow is here. There's coolant coming in here and going out there or vice versa. Like I said, don't know flow, but I'm going to pull that bolt out right there and see how much comes out if we still need to drain more out of the whole system.
Hmm. Off to a promising start here. There we go. Drain down. <clears throat> if we can pull one of these and nothing comes out, we're in the clear. Well, that's looking pretty promising. We got a little bit of separation down there on this flange and nothing's coming out yet. So I finally got this flange separated and there is some coming out of here like I figured there would be, but it's just the coolant that was in the pony, I think, because it doesn't have anywhere else to go. Like there's no lower point from the pony to drain back into the engine and out the coolant drain. We just got to get this pipe out of here, and it's just press fit basically into this uh, water jacket on the side of the block with sealed with an o-ring. And those old o-rings can sometimes be quite a bear. Come on! Well, I just had a thought here, actually. It may be difficult to do, but I'm going to try because the pony motor has to slide forward to come out anyways because you have to get the output shaft out of the bell housing so when i do that it'll give me clearance i can actually just take this pipe and spin it up 90 degrees which will clear the other stuff here on the pony that's in the way that's the only reason you even have to take this off is because these have to kind of slide past them that might work I'm the other thing we have to get out here we have to take off bolts for the exhaust flange this engagement linkage, these linkages here, they'll just kind of slide out as the pony motor moves forward. Uh, we got to take off the other half of this thing so that it's not in the way. And then what do we got? Four bolts down there, four bolts up here, and I believe there's two bolts on another mount, kind of like right in the middle here that we have to pull off. But before we can take out all those bolts, we're going to have to have this thing suspended by something so that we can get it out of here. I think this thing probably weighs somewhere in the neighborhood of six to eight hundred pounds. I mean, it is heavy. Oh yeah, there's some sludgy coolant in there. I'm betting this old girl's probably long overdue for a coolant flush and fill. <laughs> Looks like somebody had too long a bolt. And they did the old stack washers and a bigger nut underneath of the head routine there. Thanks to old boltsandnuts.com, we got proper hardware so I can just go ahead and put the proper bolts back in here when we go to reinstall this. And she's loose. Well, this bracket anyways. How you like that? All right, we're underneath the machine right now. And we're going to be looking for the two mid-mount uh, bolts that hold. We're looking for the two mid-mounted engine mount bolts on the pony motor. I was a little disappointed. This is the first I've really climbed underneath this machine. And a little disappointed that somebody's come in here and cut access holes in the belly pan. But at the same time, they're going to work out in our favor right now because I think we need to go through here to get to the bolts we need. Yeah, so if you contort your neck just right and look up past the dripping coolant there, there's two bolts up under there that we need to get out. 
So this has been a real treat getting these bolts out of here. I can barely get an open end wrench on at this point. I don't know if you guys can even see what I'm pointing at here. But uh, it's a good time. It looks like it would be a lot easier if you removed the belly pan, which is a considerable amount of work. And with all the material that's built up in the belly pan here, that seems like a serious risk of life and limb. So I'm going to try to avoid that. Uh, for as long as possible, but at some point we will have to remove the belly pan and clean it all out and I'd like to At least patch up these holes and make them to where there's bolt-on Access panels, you know, what I mean kind of true the edges up and looks like they did that here But the panels missing again, so we could do it uh, right here Because they left a sharp corner it cracked so you know there's repair work to be done down here if we're nitpicking. Ugh. Well, I finally got both of those bolts from up there. Not a fun time. I don't recommend it. But uh, it was pretty fortunate that these access holes were cut here because we would have probably had to drop the belly pan to get those otherwise. And that would have been a whole can of worms I do not want to open right now. Alrighty, now the fun part. I believe there is only two bolts down here left holding this thing in here so we need to support this weight before we go and doing those bolts otherwise we could damage something up here in the uh, output shaft area so we got a belt slung around the pony which was fun feeding that down there man that caterpillar engineered this thing tight there is barely enough room to slide that belt down and around and lasso this pony um, and we could maybe do something with a come along off of the uh, the ROPS there and try to pick it that way we're gonna have to take the hood off regardless there's no bolts holding it on though so should come right off but uh, the best way to do it would be a service truck with a crane on it I don't have a service truck but I did pick up a couple of these tire trucks from the uh, local tire shop a couple days ago and uh, this one's got a working little knuckle boom crane on it that should fit the build just fine Looks like that'll sit there, so that should be good. All right, I got the crane snaked in here through the ROPS and underneath that crossbar. I just need to get a, grab another strap and we'll hook that up. All right, it's loose. Look at that, slides right out of there, huh? Come down just a touch. Yeah! <laughs> that was actually easier than I expected. Here's where things get kind of interesting though. I kind of need to like set this thing down a little bit and readjust my strap to rotate the engine a bit so I can clear all this stuff. Oh, that worked.
Now that is a starter. This crane's pretty handy. Hard to beat that. The old knuckle boom couldn't have worked out any better. All right, now with that pony out of the way, it is a great time to get this intake manifold off so that we can replace the tube which encapsulates the pony motor exhaust through the big engine intake. So we just got a couple bolts holding it on because we've already kind of had it off, sorta. And then we got this turbo oil line over here. Outside of that, it's ready to go. Well, I think that's all of them. Come on. I think all of our hold up here is on this turbo O-ring. There we go. Good gravy. That sucked. The reason that we had to pull this thing, like I said, is there should be a tube that runs through this thing, which uh, is the exhaust for the pony engine. So to get to that, I believe we have to pull these two halves of the manifold apart. There's three more bolts in there. We got to zap out of there and should be able to split it and pull what's left of that tube out. So here's the tube we're after. I was expecting to see it pretty well rotted away. Surprisingly, it doesn't look that bad. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it only goes through one way and it's gotta go back that way. Yeah, there's a problem right there, huh? This thing must have been blessed by the Pope because it is holy. I don't see what could possibly be wrong with this. Looks just fine to me. Oh boy. Well, I brought the pony motor that we just pulled. I brought it here into the shop. Laying on its side here, you can see the extensive damage to this case. It's cracked from here all the way down. I can't even see how far it goes, but it's dang near cracked in half, it looks like. Anyways, I had to switch some parts around between the one we're going to put on and this old one. I had to take both of the uh, engine mounts off and swap it for those ones because these ones were a little bit different because they were for a D7. Uh, the O-ring that came off of this one was split in half. There's that O-ring there that came off this engine. It was split in half. So I looked at all three engines and the best one was off of the D9 pony motor. So 
I put it on here, it's like brand new. So if it was even questionable, I'd replace it. But it's like, like I said, brand new. Uh, what else did I have to do? I had to change out the, uh, the bevel gear for the hand crank starter. I just switched that out because that seal, they were the same though. But we should be ready to throw this thing back in now. Well, I have not one, but two lathes at my place. And neither of them could handle the piece of tubing that I need to repair that exhaust through the intake. So we're over here at Scrappy Industry Headquarters. And uh, his lathe is big enough we can do this job. Sam got this old piece of pipe turned down here, and this is like eighth inch wall pipe. <laughs> this one ain't ever gonna rot out. But he turned it down there. We gotta see if we got a fit here. Oh yeah, it's pretty good. I like that. Beautiful. So this guy right here is our intake exhaust manifold assembly. This piece right here is what me and Sam crafted up yesterday it got a little bit rusty sitting in my truck overnight because it rained but uh, that's completely irrelevant to what we're doing so the old pipe I don't even have it anymore it's still over at Sam's it was paper thin uh, not only because of rust it was just a really thin wall pipe from the get-go this is like I mean that's some pipe that's some probably eighth inch wall I believe uh, black uh, like a gas pipe so we turned it down to the proper size that we need for the bushing end of uh, the intake and then we Sam TIG welded this end on up here. This is actually cast so the welding process started out a little rocky because we thought it was mild steel. But uh, He got her buzzed on there. Plenty good enough for who it's for. That fits down in this end. That's why this flange is on there so that seat's down in there. But uh, yeah we're ready to bolt this thing back together. I tore the gasket a little bit here where these uh, two halves mate, but that's not a big deal. I'll just put some Permatex number two around there and crank the bolts down. Because of the imperfect nature of uh, the weld on this flange, and not really the weld so much as the fit up, uh, we had to true this face up. We had to face it and then cut the back cut so that the flange sat square essentially on the tube. So I just put a little bit of bead of sealer around there, some exhaust pipe sealer. And when we get this in here, that should take up any uh, slop in that face now. Look at that. Perfect. Basically you just need to make sure that this thing actually seals up good and tight because uh, if you had any leaks in here the intake from the diesel could be drawing air through the dirty exhaust of the pony engine. So we got that face nice and sealed up. You can see through all the way down to the end there. Those stinking mud daubers filled up every hole on this thing. I gotta go around. I already blew a bunch of them out, but I gotta go. Here's another one filled. I gotta go hit those with the air compressor. Down at this end, I did the same thing. This pipe stops just 
just below flush so we have a slight counter bore there basically and I just took that exhaust compound and cut a little bead in there and tried to fill up any gap so that we can't suck air between this packing and that pipe it's a pretty snug fit I don't think it would really suck much there anyway but that ensures that we don't yeah buddy going up The old knuckle boom is not the most uh, finessing kind of crane. I'm trying to go as slow as I can with these moves, but it ain't having it. Had to stop and re-rig here. I had to do this on the way out too. I had to just kind of set that thing down in there to where it wedges itself. Hook another strap in the works because I was working underneath of this crossbar to get it that far. To get it slid in the rest of the way, the uh, elbow off the turbo is in the way, so I have to retract the crane and stick it above this brace now and slide it in the rest of the way. There we go. There we go. Yeah, we got it slid in there now. We got our o-ring tucked into that bore back there in the bell housing I got a bolt started up here I'm gonna get put a few more in there before we take the crane off well I'm underneath the tractor right now and I'm working on getting these two mid mount bolts here for the pony motor and these are the ones that were especially fun to remove and if you can imagine they've been just as fun to reinstall but I think I got it about licked now And with that, we should be able to unhook this thing. Now we just got to get everything else hooked back up. Okay, we finally got this pony motor all back together here. Really, really struggled with that exhaust manifold back there. I actually had to do some uh, grinding on the back of the casting. I don't know if it's because it's a different block or what, but I couldn't get it to seat up against the block and get the bolt holes to line up uh, on the block for the through bolts without, without taking a bit of material off to let it square itself up. Other than that, it went together pretty easy. All we got to do now is throw our uh, repaired intake manifold back on, and we're going to be ready to fire this thing up, I hope. Maybe I should have kept the knuckle boom around for this thing. Man, is this heavy.
da 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 Got the whole thing hooked back together here. All the oil lines, coolant lines, the whole deal. And then Scrappy industry surprised me. Coming up for the gravy. Yeah, he shows up to steal my thunder and we're gonna throw the air cleaner back on this thing and try to get it fired up. And the only reason I'm even bothering to throw the air cleaner on is because you guys because did not- Because of you. Because of you, yeah. yeah. This thing is brutally loud without an air cleaner on it. So it's all for you guys. Some gasoline in the pony engine tank. We have the main diesel tank connected to the fuel system, which we didn't do before. They had it disconnected for some unknown reason. I looked in the tank as best I can, it looks okay. So, cross your fingers. See if something happens here. All right, moment of truth. I'm gonna try to fire this thing up. We still don't have any of the wires connected for the starter up to the seat, so kind of a two-man operation at the moment. That's fine. Ready? Contact. Contact. The pony engine seems to do the trick, turns this big beast over just fine, and uh, there was some air in the lines, that's why it took a little bit of time to uh, 
chug to life there, if you will. We could have cracked all the lines loose and purged the air out, but when you got a pony motor, maybe not necessary. You just kind of crank it for a little while longer. It doesn't really hurt anything. As I hope you could hear whenever we shut it down though, there's definitely some issues with our turbo. We, we suspected there might have been. We thought we heard some turbo noise on the first time we got this thing running, but after shutting it down, now we definitely know there's, there's turbo issues. So I'm back here. This is the next day. We had it running yesterday. I want to get this thing fired up again and drive it into the shop because definitely have some turbo issues. The whole thing needs serviced and gone over and made sure it's in ready to run condition before we slap the blade back on it and go push some dirt. <laughs> the eight is officially in the shop guys a little nerve-wracking but we came through it we didn't hurt anything uh, i put those boards down on the floor of course to protect the concrete and it also disperses the weight from like these track pads you know when you're in the dirt the ground pressure is spread out across not only this part but the entire pad versus when you're on a hard surface like concrete you're only putting the weight on that teeny narrow strip on each pad so definitely jumps your ground pressure way up but I put two boards underneath of this thing to help disperse the weight and uh, hopefully the concrete doesn't have any issues I trust my man Fiscardo did a great job on this floor we used a higher strength mix than most people would use I don't remember the PSI off the top of my head not to mention it has the fiberglass reinforcement mixed in it so this is the heaviest thing i've parked on it so far and uh, i'm feeling pretty good about it so what's on the to-do list for this thing well first and foremost that turbo that thing is scary sounding and well we got this beast pulled into the shop here so this seems like a great stopping point for now unfortunately i had high hopes of getting the blade slapped on it and being able to just go straight to work but that turbo kind of put a nail in our coffin for now. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started yanking that turbo off of there and we will pick up there on the next video. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please do me a big favor, hit that thumbs up button down below. It really helps out the channel, it doesn't cost you guys a dime. If you'd like to help support the channel in a little more direct way, head on over to dieselcreek.com, pick yourself up some sweet swag over there. We've got new 4th of July t-shirts for sale right now on the website, as well as all the other stuff. We've got hats, t-shirts, beer koozies, pocket tees, sticker packs, the whole nine yards over at the store. That's dieselcreek.com. Link is down in the description. But 
As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one.